Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Pastor my good evening, it's half past five. This is Update for Friday, 15th of March, 2024, from Manx Radio. 30 minutes looking at the latest news on the Isle of Man and background to that news and sport and business and sea watch and travel updates and the newsmakers in person this evening. No parking at that new Douglas Village. Problems at the NSC swimming pool. The number of properties to rent is decreasing, raising awareness of endometriosis and the ravens. Head to Manchester to face Cheadle Town tomorrow. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fast Mai, Chanel Suku. Fast Mai. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture has received a report into issues at the NSC, which it says requires further analysis before action can be taken. Multiple lanes in the main swimming pool have been shut on safety grounds due to broken tiles. The steam packet company says a technical issue that delayed the overnight Manxman sailing from Hesham has been rectified. The operator says the engineering team identified and quickly rectified a small technical issue. And Manx SPCA is appealing to anyone who's seen a German Shepherd dog which has been missing in the Cornet headland since around 3 o'clock today. Diesel is dark-coloured and described as friendly. In international news, the Israeli army has been given the go-ahead to begin a military operation in Rafah. The Prime Minister's office says troops are preparing to evacuate civilians. Meanwhile, a U.S. charity, World Central Kitchen, says it's begun to offload food that's been towed from Cyprus to Gaza. The American military is also planning to deliver aid by sea. And it's understood the Conservatives are in talks about receiving a further £5 million from a donor at the centre of a race row. They've already res- fa- they're already facing calls to return £10 million to Frank Hester. Those are your headlines. News at 6. Secure tomorrow today with Man Benham's private client team. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Goram Ayat, thank you. Chanel from the Ronalds Way Met Office. Still got that strong wind warning for the North Irish Sea. State of Sea is moderate, then slight overnight. The weather for this evening, dry with a light northwesterly. Clear sky is going to bring some ground frost overnight. Minimum temperature is 2 degrees. And for Jasan, dry and sunny to kick off with on a light southwesterly up to 11 degrees. Patchy rain coming in on that strong southwesterly. The overnight minimum is seven. And for Jaduni, sunny intervals, a few late showers, a moderate breeze, and 12 degrees top temperature. Sunset this evening, 24 minutes past six. Low tides, 24 minutes past nine. High tide overnight, 3:14 a.m. Sunrise, 29 minutes past six, and low water, 27 minutes to 10 tomorrow morning. Uh, the boat is late leaving Hesham, be late coming in and late going out, and there's a delay on the EasyJet departure to Manchester. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674-573 or visit the showroom on the Snugbrook Trading Estate. Residents who move into the proposed new village in Douglas will not be able to park on neighbouring streets, so says Infrastructure Minister Tim Crockle, MHK, who was questioned in the House of Keys this week by Douglas Central MHK, Chris Thomas, about plans for traffic management around the Brownfield site. Residents of the proposed Westmoreland village will not be eligible for disc zone parking permits within parking zone H. The H zone is at capacity and one of the key design drivers of the development is to encourage site users to choose alternative transport modes over single occupancy car use. Some off-street parking has been provided within the site, of course. The current on-street parking within the surrounding streets will not change significantly. The main road will see a slight increase in on-street parking due to the fact that a section of no waiting restrictions on the northern curb line will reduce in length as part of the scheme. The users of the community health facilities, the users of the school, the commercial businesses, the community groups around there and also other residents will be very pleased to know that there will be no extra on 
Bond Street Residence Parking Permits Limited. Can the Minister advise how that will be put into law? Will it be part of the tenancy agreement? And have discussions been ongoing with Douglas City Council or anybody else about how that will work in practice? Because I'm sure there are Douglas City Councillors who will be all over me this morning hearing that they're no longer part of the uh, process to do with West Midland Village because they believe categorically they were going to be involved in the senior living block and the other apartments involved. Yeah, I have to say we're an awful long time away before we get around to sorting this out and everybody in that area, you know, the, the Honourable Members just mentioned regards to West Midland Health Centre and the school and the nursery will all be involved if and when, you know, come the day. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture has received a report into issues at the swimming pool at the NSC which it says requires further analysis before action can be taken. The story with Beth Espy. Multiple lanes in the main swimming pool have been shut on safety grounds due to broken tiles. Manx Radio understands the extent of the damage is worsening and the pool may need to shut for around six weeks for repair work to be undertaken. Last month, former Education Minister Julie Edge told the House of Keys her department was waiting the outcome of a survey undertaken in November. A spokesperson has now confirmed to Manx Radio this report has been received and the next steps are being determined. The tiles were replaced as part of the major £4.2 million refurbishment of the NSC in 2018. The department spokesperson says the department's received a report with recommendations which require further analysis before the next steps are determined. Any changes, they say, required to the opening times of the swimming pool will be advertised in due course on the NSC's social media pages. You can find out more at manxradio.com. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. FC Isle of Man are going to be hoping to make it three straight wins for only the third time this season when they travel to face Cheadle Town in the NWCFL Premier Division at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon after the Manchester side earned a late win at the bowl in the reverse fixture between the sides earlier this season. Ravens boss Paul Jones explains what lessons they took from that setback. I've watched it back a couple of times this week and, and we started the game very well and then dropped it off and dropped it a little bit deeper similar to how we played in the first half against Longridge on Saturday and Cheadle had quite a lot of position Possession and we just gave them the the initiative and gave them the momentum after actually having it all. So we've got to be on the front foot. We've got to be brave in our positioning and, and brave in and out of possession and really take the game to Cheadle and, and not back off. You know, if you're on top, you've got to keep pushing and keep pushing. And you can't have two minutes where you're not quite at the right level because the other teams in this league will take that as an opportunity. So that's the main thing really is when we're on top, keep on top and keep pushing and keep driving forward like we did in the second half on Saturday. And and if we can do that over 90 minutes then we give ourselves a good chance of winning a game In just over a month's time the season will have come to an end so what does success look like once you get to the 20th of April and is the promotion playoffs still a realistic possibility? I don't know if it's realistic um, it's still a possibility very much so you know you can only see from the results this week of all the all the teams beating each other and you know um, some of the teams needing points not getting them and you know it, there's still a lot to play for so our aim and success is to get as close to those playoff places as we possibly can. If we can go on a winning run, which we haven't done for the length of games we'll need to, to give ourselves a chance to get in the playoffs so far this season. But if we can, which we believe we're very capable of doing, then we give ourselves a really good chance. And yes, it is up to other teams to lose games. But, you know, if we can keep winning, then, you know, that that's the aim. And our, our success is getting as close to those fifth places we possibly can and, and using those experiences to either go into the playoffs and do really well or to, or to make sure that, you know, we we don't miss out next year. A shortage in the availability of homes available to rent in the Isle of Man is concerning, according to the Chair of the Housing and Communities Board. It's believed the number of properties on the market has been decreasing for a number of years. MHK David Ashford says it's creating a perfect storm. For a start, you have the current interest rate, and the other side of the base rate as well, of course, is people are getting more back on their savings in the bank. So landlords are quite rightly saying, well, actually, the return I would get if I just sold this property and put that money into the bank, I'd get a bigger return than actually renting it out. And I think also there's still uncertainty about what the final regulations are going to say from the Act that went through a few years ago. And I think all of that is just, at the moment, creating a perfect storm. So it's important we look at the rental market to see what we can do to reassure landlords and encourage them to actually remain in the market and new landlords to enter. I think it's wider than just the Housing Communities Board. I think it's government as a whole. We are a facilitator as a board. We're not a government 
government department. We are a board that brings together all the key elements of government. And I think what we need to do is be having those conversations with landlords. And I think we need to engage out with the sector to see what are the big challenges, what are the big bars at the moment and what we can do to overcome it. Because it is concerning that there is at the moment a strain on the rental sector. Governments can't just literally intervene, throw money at it and solve the problem. It's not going to be a quick fix. I'm going to be quite honest about that. But what we need to do is actually find what the biggest blockers are with landlords and actually work with them to remove those blocks. And as I've said time and time again, this government will be judged on what it actually delivers in terms of housing because housing underpins everything. If we don't get housing right, we will not encourage people either to stay or come into the island. So it is the fundamental thing and we have to get it right. The last two years of work of the Housing Communities Board has been around collecting data at looking at schemes. The next two years of the Housing Community, two and a half years of the Housing Communities Board has got to be about delivery. Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Big delays. The motor vessel Mangsman left Heesham at 5 to 4. She won't be in until probably gone 7.30 this evening. So the 7.45 departure will be delayed probably till about 9 o'clock. So the half past 11 arrival in Heesham pushed back till probably near a half past 1. The overnight departure scheduled for 2.15 from Heesham, arriving back to Douglas tomorrow morning around 6, if it does, and it's on time. And the departure tomorrow morning, 8.45, Manxman heads to Heesham. Like the Steam Packet on Facebook for the latest sailing information. An awareness walk's being held this weekend to raise awareness about endometriosis. Women with the condition are welcome to share their stories and tell the Manx Endometriosis Support Group what help they'd like to see from the island's health sector. One of the organisers is Karen Bell. Because everybody is affected differently by this condition, some people might not be able to walk very far. So we're making it so that you can have a little stroll around the Arboretum. If you want to do more, you can do more. And then afterwards, we will all go to the Methodist Hall where there will be tea and coffee and people can meet and have an informal chat. Bring 10 food items to illustrate the 1 in 10. Now, when we say 1 in 10, that's diagnosed. There's more than 1 in 10 people affected by this condition. Bring the 10 food items, whatever anybody can manage. It can be 10 packets of crisps. It's just a starting point, really. You don't have to have a diagnosis of endometriosis to come. If you think you might, just come along. All we really want to do is to help other people to start asking the question, because the way to change is to educate educate ourselves and to advocate for ourselves so we are there to help people to put emails together if they want what they might say at an appointment to get what they might need you know we can do all of those things or if they just want to have a chat we're there and we can help with that but going forward from this first sort of walk it is the hope that we can have more in face meetings because when we talk about endometriosis and support the surgery and access to the specialists that's step one this is a long-term condition and even with excision it's not cured. Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 17 minutes before six, Reckitt Benkheiser, the British multinational consumer goods group, tumbled today amid concerns about baby formula compensation. According to Reuters, an Illinois jury in America has ordered Reckitt unit Mead Johnson to pay $60 million to the mother of a premature baby who died of an intestinal disease after being fed the company's Enfamil baby formula. The jury in the Illinois State Court in St. Clair County on Wednesday found that Mead Johnson was negligent and it failed to warn of the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis, Reuters said. And for a full daily market report go to RamseyCrocall.com Elon Musk says it would make sense to have Tesla's electric truck mass-produced in Grunheide southeast of Berlin. It's the site of Europe's only Tesla gigafactory. The German newspaper handles Blad reports Mr. Musk visited the site as operations resumed after a forced halt for following a suspected arson attack on the 5th of March, which cut the plant's electricity supply. The chief exec told staff production of Tesla's affordable Model 2, costing less than €23,000, is definitely coming to Berlin in the long term. The company plans to start high-volume production of Tesla's first electric Arctic, a semi-truck, uh, first presented in 2017 and since then fabricated in small numbers in Nevada uh, since 2022, and it should be starting production in Europe by the 
the end of 2024. Elon Musk's goal is to sell it for about the same price as a diesel truck. Germany's federal prosecutors are investigating the arson attack in Grunheide, which is supposed to have cost Tesla close to a billion euros. It's classed as a potential act of terrorism. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets closed lower. The dollar was on track for a weekly gain. Oil edged lower and gold edged lower too over concerns that the Federal Reserve might defer interest rate cuts beyond June. The numbers from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London. The FTSE 100 down two tenths of a percent, 7,727. The DAX in Frankfurt down fractionally three hundredths of a percent, 17,937. The Dow Jones Industrial in New York short time ago was down half a percent at 38,700. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index down just over a percentage point, 16,964. And the S&P 500 down seven tenths of a percent at 5,113. But the day continues. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at one US dollar, 27.3 cents, one euro, 16.9, and 23 South African rand, 88.1 cents. In commodities, gold's down just over a tenth of a percent, $2,159 per troy ounce and a barrel of Brent crude up eight tenths of a percent at $85.41. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog baskets. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Cook all later? Oh, um, no, of, of course not. Um, 5 p.m. is it? Quarter to three. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit RamseyCrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Isle of Man Water Sports. Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Here's the relevant information. If you're sailing, kayaking, windsurfing, paddleboarding, sea swimming, diving or surfing this weekend, sea temperature is 8 degrees. And for Saturday, the wind is variable, force 3 or less, quickly settling, uh, settling south or southeasterly, force 3 or 4, gradually increasing 5 or 6. Wave height 0.5 to 1.5 metres, wave period 4 to 7 seconds, high tide 3.40 p.m. tomorrow. And Sunday the 17th, the wind is southerly or southwesterly, force 3 or 4, increasing force 4 or 5 for a time in the afternoon. Wave height 0.5 to 1 metres, wave period 4 to 6 seconds, and high tide 4.40 p.m. Sunday. Manx Glass and Glazing are proud to be an approved contractor with Construction Isle of Man. Call the team on 674-573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690-300. A consultation into whether the bishop should retain the right to vote in Timwall shows 51% are in favour, 49% against. Onken MHK Rob Callister suggests there isn't a strong desire or significant outcry for any changes to be made, but the man behind the call, Ramsey MHK Laurie Hooper, disagrees. Mr Callister's response is exactly what I expected from those who don't support the bill and who insisted on me going out and consulting. It was Mr Collis's amendment, I think, that insisted I go out and consult. I have done that. I have gone out and consulted. Clearly, the consultation did not produce the response that he and others wanted, so they will ignore it. That's my view. I, that's what I thought they would do from the outset. I thought if this didn't come back with the answer they wanted, they would start saying, well, it doesn't matter anyway. I would argue that with nearly 3,000 responses, that is one of the largest responses to a consultation that we've seen on the island, there is clearly an interest in this. And even though there was some significant lobbying against the bill, the consultation still, even in the face of that, came out in the positive with the consultee responses supporting the bill. So for someone who called for a consultation, who said, go out and talk to the public, I've done that. The public have told you what they think, really, it's incumbent on us to listen, I would argue. I didn't really support going out to consult in the first place because I knew there would be a lobbying effort on the part of people against the bill because it, people who I think who don't want to see change are, are normally more invested in these things. So I wasn't expecting the results to come out as 
they did. Uh, I thought there'd be a concerted lobbying effort that would have pushed the, the narrative and pushed the numbers into the negative. And equally, because that then wouldn't have been representative of the Manx public, I thought, actually, what is the point going out and consulting when you almost know that the outcome is going to be uh, weighted uh, towards those not in favour of doing a thing? Uh, I also had a very strong feeling that uh, even if I were to consult, those who were against the bill in the House of Keys still wouldn't support it anyway. So I, I don't think this will change anyone's mind. <laughs> Manx Radio Sport. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I. Good evening. Starting with football and a potentially pivotal clash in the title race in Division 2 awaits on Saturday going into the latest set of Manx fixtures. Leaders Castletown travel to unbeaten Foxdale who sit just one point behind the Southerners but with two games in hand. There's also a clash of the Titans in women's football on Sunday as Corinthians take on Peel in the first round of the Women's FA Cup. Meanwhile, all of Saturday's games are due to get underway at 2.30pm with the exception of St Mary's versus Corinthians in the Men's Premier League which starts at the earliest time of 1.45. In rugby there's a significant milestone as the Ireland hosts its first ever Cheshire RFU competition final on Saturday with two Manx sides to battle it out for silverware. Ramsey take on Western Vikings in the Cheshire Plate final at 2.30pm at Bella Fletcher tomorrow. Manx Radio's rugby correspondent Dave Christian thinks there's a standout side on paper in this showdown but that might not tell the whole story. Based on form it's going to be a Ramsey win. However it's a final. Ramsey have swept all before them in the Manx Shield however Western Vikings are a little tough side and they get a little bit of get up and go behind them they're going to cause Ramsey some problems elsewhere there are tough league ties tomorrow for Douglas and Vagabonds on home turf against Crew and Natwich and Ashton Underline respectively whilst Vagabonds ladies host Eccles and with just three game weeks to go the title races are hotting up in the Isle of Man's men's and ladies hockey leagues ahead of the latest fixtures across the island this weekend among those battles at the top going to the wire is in ladies division one with leaders Vikings B looking to hold off nearest challengers backers B and Ramsey A the latter two of these three face each other on Saturday, whilst Vikings B take on Valkyries B at 11am, as our hockey correspondent Ben Cunningham explains. Now if Valkyries can get one over Vikings B, Backers B if they can win, or Ramsey, they will bring that gap down to just either one point for Ramsey, or if it's Backers that win, it'll be level pegging and it'll be on goal difference. You can see a full schedule of this weekend's hockey fixtures at manxradio.com Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the 20-4 EasyJet from Manchester only touched down at 25-6, to 6, so that's going to be uh, late going out. The next inbound, 7.30, EasyJet from Gatwick's on time. The 5-8 to 8 Logan Air from Liverpool returning patient transfers on time. And the 8 o'clock Logan Air from London City on town. Uh, so outbound, uh, the Manchester 10 past 4 won't be going until 5 past 6 tonight. Uh, next, it's also the uh, the 6 o'clock, just prior to that, then 6 o'clock, Logan Air to Liverpool, patient transfer outbound, and the 8 o'clock, EasyJet back to London Gatwick. Hillside Avenue Douglas has closed through to Circular Road for adjacent office window replacement. A section of Switzerland Road Douglas closed for construction work. Temporary lights on Brighton Terrace Douglas at the Mount Bradder Junction for gas main replacement. Face closures on the Starvey Road for water main work and water main work for the Ballakill Ferrick Road in Colby. And water main lane uh, between the Cronk and Sandy Gate with some lights there. And Kean Drockard Road in Andrus closed for water main work. And water main work too on uh, the Ballalai Road which is closed south of Kurt Michael or some closures certainly temporary lights on Governor's Road between Blackberry Lane and Cork Hills Roundabout for patching work in Onken and the St Jude Road's closed for resurfacing between Solby Bridge and St Jude's temporary lights on the Lazare Road near Solby at Kerramore for work on the pavements and between Cronkavody and Bagaro temporary lights on the TT course near Handley's Corner for drainage work and temporary lights on the TT course and the 40 mile an hour speed limit between the Craignabar and Hilborough Ask how you can Spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. A new catch-up campaign has been launched to make sure people, and that could be you, are up to date with their MMR vaccinations. The story from Siobhan Fletcher. The joint campaign from Manx Care and Public Health Isle of Man comes as part of a drive to protect island residents from becoming seriously unwell as measles cases continue to rise in the UK. It's hoped there will be uptake from children and adults up to the age of 25 who've missed their measles, mumps and rubella or MMR vaccinations. Figures 
figures from the NHS in the UK show that more than 3.4 million children under the age of 16 there are either unprotected or not fully protected and are at risk of catching the serious and preventable diseases. The vaccine is given at 12 months and again at three years, four months of age. You can check if your child has had either dose in your child's red book. Children and young people aged 6 to 25 years who are not fully protected are also eligible for the catch-up campaign. Patients are encouraged to book their MMR vaccine at their GP surgery. Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Students from Balakameen High School have designed a sensory glove that people with visual impairments and blindness can use to detect objects. Creed are one of 21 teams from six schools taking part in junior achievement. So it has two ultrasonic sensors on the top and it senses through uh, ultrasonic pulses where things are and sends signals down through vibrations alerting the person that's wearing the glove. In the future we want to integrate a camera through a machine learning algorithm called YOLO. It stands for you only look once and we'll be able to differentiate differentiate between certain uh, obstacles so we'll have implemented vehicle detection which is uh, the very first out of any other raid in the world. Our initial inspiration was from a girl called Evie in our school. She is a visually impaired person in our school that's well known by our society and she, we, we were actually introduced to a podcast she was making and this inspired us to make something for the visually impaired so we started off with the idea of an attachment that goes onto a white cane but we realized that's not effective as we already have competitors such as Ultra Cane and Mini Guide that have similar technology so we decided to make a glove instead so Ben actually came up with the idea and then yeah we've been developing the glove ever since and we've added features we've decided to change features so and it's like it's a process basically so I don't like the term disability because it puts a stigma on people the main way it will help it will uh, since service animals and the traditional white cane are incapable of detecting certain obstacles such as above the belt uh, hazards and vehicles this will help it can detect both right it will also help as it can remain discreet as since blindness is a big stigma around it uh, many people with blindness and other sort of visual impairment don't really want to use the traditional white cane as it puts them out as being blind whereas the sensor guard that's the name of our product the glove you can't visibly tell that somebody's blind if you're wearing it because we'll have it discreet and we'll have it ergonomic you won't look like you're blind that's it for update tonight compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department thanks to newsreader Chanel Soku producer Amy Griffiths Friday Sport Preview with Rob Pritchard after six. The Greatest Hits with Chris Kinley at 6.30. And I'm back on Monday. W-I-N-T.